It's time for Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. Join us as we study the uncompromised Word of God and how it can be applied to our everyday lives. You know, the Lord never ceases to amaze me. When I think he's taken me one direction, you know, I think he's taken me one direction. He's had on my mind the story of the Tower of Babel. Just all week long, the story of the Tower of Babel. You remember that story from, I hate to call them Bible stories, Bill, because they're truths. And uh, most of them uh, really did take place. They're part of history. And so the story of Babel is an incredible story. It happened from the descendants of Noah. It was after the flood. And the race was regrowing, if you will. The earth was uh, being filled once again after the flood of Noah. So we're going to go to Genesis chapter 11. And I thought, dear Lord, where are you taking me this? I thought he was going to teach me on the power of imagination, which he did. And I, I thought all these things, and he took me. He's, he's really teaching me about marriage. It just, I know, right, Barb? The Tower of Babel. If you think about it, Babel and marriage, it can go together. It can. Eric started laughing immediately. He knew exactly where I was going with it. This message, this lesson that he taught me will go across the board. It will cover marriage. It will cover your business. It will cover your relationships, your friendships. The, the principle will go across the board. So this message really will fit everyone here today. Genesis chapter 11, we're going to pick up in verse 1, the story of Noah and his descendants. It says, And the whole earth was of one language, and of one speech. Now that's a sentence within itself. The whole earth was of one language. When it talks about language there, when you look it up, it literally means they spoke the same words. If, if I said apple to Cindy, she understood what apple meant. We use the same word for apple. The, the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Now you might think that's the same word, but when you look it up, it's not. That word speech, when you look it up in the Strong's, actually means one cause, one thought, one work, or one care. So the whole earth was of one language, apple meant apple, but they were also of one speech. They, they had the same cause, they had the same thought, they had the same care. And you can see how this could happen because these were all descendants of one man, Noah. So you can see how that's possible. Because we look at it now and we think, how on earth could this be possible for a whole earth to be of one language and of one cause, of one thought? Because they were all descendants of one man. It's going to be important in a little bit. And it came to pass, verse 2, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, and they said, and they said, and they said. Okay? I highlighted that because it's important. Communication. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men build. Did you know he cares about what we're doing down here? I just find that so fascinating that he came down to check out what they were involved in and what they were doing. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the Lord said, Behold, this is God speaking, okay? Behold, the people is one. Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech." So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. 
Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. In other words, they were able to communicate their thoughts, their cares, their cause, and their vision to each other so effectively that God himself said, because of this, nothing can be restrained from them. Anything they set their mind to do, anything they imagine, he said, they can do it. Now that's pretty crazy powerful. And I know you hear a lot of sermons on this story talking about imagination and it's there the lesson is there but i see something else there <laughs> i see something else there i see the communication and the unity as being their power because that's how they share the imagination somebody started off with that imagination and shared it so effectively that it spread and to this powerful thing that God said could not be stopped unless he stopped it. That's, I don't know about you, that's pretty bold and that's pretty strong. God said, behold, the people is one. They're alike, they're all together, they're united, they have one language. And because of that, this they began to do. And now, now, and now, nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Hmm. The power was in their ability to speak one another's language and to hear and understand, to cast the vision, to cast the cause, and get everybody else involved. This is what leadership is. This is what leadership is. It can be a good thing. Here it was being used as a bad thing, and we'll go back to why here in a little bit. But I want you to apply this where you are. I don't care if it's your volleyball, no, wait, soccer team. Soccer coach. <laughs> he doesn't know how to play soccer. Anybody here knows how to play soccer? Talk to Bobby. He needs help. He's coaching a team. I don't care if, it, if, it's, if it's coaching this soccer team, if it's your ball team, Craig, if it's your household, if it's you and your husband, if it's you and your friends, this message goes across the board. It, it will apply anywhere you apply it. You'll notice he didn't, I'm going to just, because I don't know their names, call them Shem the third, because Shem was one of Noah's sons. He didn't send Shem the third off to an island to disrupt this because it was his imagination. That's not how God caused this act to fail. He didn't just send somebody off. That's not how this imagination was destroyed. How did he do it? How did he stop the progression of this thing that, that had been imagined and was now being built? Why is it important for me to know how God stopped it? Because that's how any imagination and goal was stopped. And some goals and imaginations are good and don't need to be walked away from. Your marriage is good. It's good. It's godly. It's a, it's, a, it's a God covenant, and it doesn't need to be walked away from. I need to know what causes me to walk away from it. I need to know what causes you to walk away from it. I need to know what destroys, what keeps a goal from being met in business. We've got businesses. Rusty and I are involved in businesses. What causes those businesses to fail? What causes them to succeed? We've got children. We've got family. What causes families to succeed? What causes families to fail? I got friendships. What, what causes friendships and relationships to succeed? What causes them to fail? It's all found here in the Tower of Babel. God's word is so relevant. The power was in their unity. The power was in their ability to speak one another's language. And, you know, we've heard a lot over the last couple of years about love languages. I agree. I think it's fascinating information. I think it's timely information. I think it's important that you know what your mate speaks, 
what your children speak, what your boss speaks, what your coworkers speak. I think it's important that you come to a place that you understand each other and you know how to meet each other's needs. That's speaking one language. It's the power of unity and how to understand each other, how to cast a vision in order to get people to unite for a cause. How do you do that? Common word, common cause, common work. So many times we want people to work together, but they're not speaking the same language. We want people to stay married. They're not speaking the same language. We want people to do something and achieve something together in our businesses. Your people aren't speaking. We want as a church to get something accomplished. We have a cause. But we're not speaking the same language. We're not getting the same message. We're not hearing each other and understanding each other. Therefore, we don't have the power of unity. So we got to learn. This is the biggest part of humanity is learning how to communicate. I have not been the best because I thought my language was the best. I don't know how many of you in here speak English, but when you go into another country, you think English is the best. Everyone should speak English. I don't even like to go to it. I like to go to another country, but when I go to other countries, I want them to speak my language. We get that way sometimes in marriage. We get that way sometimes in business. We get that way sometimes in church. Some people be mad when they find out what color the pews are. <laughs> Not after today. Verse 6. Go back to verse 6. The Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they began to do. And now, and to me that just means because of this, nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. And now, nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So, he said, let's go down there. How, how are we going to destroy this? We're going to go down there and we're going to confound their language. That word confound means to mix it up and to confuse it. And it's actually also used for fodder. Who knows what fodder is? It's a feed, right? Filler. You take the good stuff and you mix other stuff in with it. Mix other stuff in with it. You leave pure. You mix other stuff in it for filler. Fodder. It's also the same word used for that, which I find fascinating. He said, let's go down there. Let's confuse. Let's mix up their language. Let's confuse their language. Why? So that they won't understand one another's speech. He says that in verse 6. Verse 7. Go to, let us go down, let's confound their language, confuse it, mix it up, weaken it. So that they may not understand one another's cause, vision. So when he wants to destroy a marriage. Let's take Dylan's wife down here. This lovely lady sitting in the seat next to him. Because we don't want to use anybody that's already got a ring on, right Dylan? <laughs> If Dylan has this powerhouse marriage that he's going to have. That's right. Amen. The, the way the enemy is going to try to destroy that unity and that power from which nothing can be restrained. He's going to try to confound their language. He's going to try to weaken their communication. He's going to try to get it where they don't understand each other's cause. And when you can do that, you, you've weakened the imagination. Everything he's dreamed of, everything he's, he's built in his heart from the word of God that a marriage is to be, everything you've put in you that your marriage, everything, you know, the Cinderella story, girls, the princess story from Walt Disney. We've all gone through the, the princess series, right? This is what a marriage is supposed to be. And then suddenly you're in one and it doesn't look like that. We can't, we've got to keep our communication pure. We've got to make sure in whatever business, if you're boss to employee, co-workers, ball teams, soccer teams, it doesn't matter. We've got to make sure that the communication is there that brings unity to the cause. What's our cause? Why on earth are we married? Rusty and I joke back and forth all the time, quite frequently, about why we married each other. It was his tacos. I mean, we, we, we laugh because he fixed me tacos the first time we went out at his sister's house. And I say, you know, it was the tacos, right? You know, and we have these jokes that we go back and forth when we do something. 
and you know, we'll say, oh, it's for my money or for the tacos or for this or for that. But why are we married? Thank you, Bethany. It's God ordained. It's God ordained. And when we get our calls right, we'll get our lingo right. See, we marry for so many other reasons. What can Rusty do for me? He keeps meat in the freezer. That boy keeps meat in the freezer. He's kind. He's gentle. He compliments me. He makes me feel good about myself. I can sit here and list the reasons that... But I will not build a strong home if anything is other than... What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Our cause has to go back to God. God, it always has to go, no matter what, on our jobs, on our businesses, you buy a business, you're in a new business, you're, you're running a business. Yes, it's to succeed. But why? You better go back to a cause. It'll straighten up your lingo. It'll straighten up your lingo. I really didn't have that in here, so I don't know where I am. Let's confound their language. Why? So they won't understand one another's speech. That word understand, when you look it up, it means to hear intelligently. You know, communication has two responsible parts. Speaking clearly and hearing clearly. And it's not your responsibility to speak clearly and my responsibility to hear clearly. It's my responsibility to speak clearly and my responsibility to hear clearly. It's her responsibility to speak clearly and her responsibility to hear clearly. Why well, just I don't understand him. I don't understand him. Well, then speak clearly to him about it and hear clearly what he says. And you keep... Iron sharpens iron. You, you keep that communication going until both parties have a clear understanding. When you have a clear understanding, you are of one language and you are of one speech and then nothing can be restrained from you. But so many times we just give up when somebody doesn't make sense to us. Well, I've got news for you. <laughs> Opposites attract, right, Karen? She's laughing. Opposites attract. We just don't have anything in common. Well, of course you don't. You didn't need another you. I love what Tim Brooks says. If he was just like me, I wouldn't need him. If I was just like him, he would not need me. We need each other. We're building something together. Your family's building something. You and your business partner are building something together. You're not alike. You don't think alike. You don't do things alike. Praise God, this is going to work. This is going to work because I'm going to get you and you're going to get me. And then that builds something. That puts something together that no other one person can do. And that's the way we got to look at things and sometimes that's tough to do. Understand. Hear intelligently. I like that. Understand each other. <clears throat> so this is Susan's version of the verse. Let's go down and confuse their ability to communicate with each other so that they will not hear intelligently one another's cause, goals, and vision. That's how you destroy it. That's how you destroy it. That's how you destroy something powerful. That's how you destroy something powerful. That's how you cause failure. That's how you cause people to want to quit. That's a powerful thing. And this works across the board. We've got to find a common language. Got to find a common language so that we can hear intelligently one another's cause, work, goals, and vision. How on earth are we going to all come to that kind of unity? Well, let's look back at Noah's boys. Let's look back at Shem the third, Shem the fourth, and Shem the fifth, however many Shems there were. How did they come to this place of unity? How did they all think the same? How did they all talk the same? Because they all had one father. 
That's how we get on the same page. It's not about how I was raised. I was raised so different from Rusty. My goodness, he's from California. (laughs) California. You know. Liberals. Liberals, God bless me. Liberals. He moved here when he was 14 and got converted. He even got excited at the hog game. Who wouldn't get excited at the hog game yesterday? I knew I'd find a way to get it in. (laughs) We're raised totally different. He probably thought his way was right. I thought my way was right. The way my parents did it was right. No, the way his parents did it was right. How are we going to find unity? Your business partner. She's raised one way. You're brought up in business another way. How are we going to find unity? Your friends. Your friends are different. How are you going to get along with them, sis? They're raised one way. You're raised another way. How are we, how are we going to have this kind of unity? We've got to go back to we have one father. If we go back to his word, then our words will all be the same. That's it. If we go back to his word, our words will all be the same. We will all have one language. We will then understand. We will then have a cause. I want our marriage to bring glory to God. Have we had tough times? Well, good grief. We got stepkids. We've been through the death of a child. I mean, we live life. I'm in the ministry. Phone calls come at 1 o'clock in the morning. 2 o'clock in the morning. 3 o'clock in the morning. It doesn't matter. He gets up at 3 o'clock in the morning. This is life. How are we going to find unity? We got one father. We therefore we have one language and we have one cause and that's to bring glory to God and to be a light in a dark world, to be set apart, to be different. To be different, to show the father's will that our life would show the will of God, the perfect, acceptable will of God. And if that's not our cause and that's not our goal, our tower is we're going to quit. We're going to quit on the tower. It says they left it. They left off building it. Why? Because they stopped understanding each other. How on earth are we going to come to this kind of unity? We have a common word. God's word. As a church, we're all raised different. We've got Catholics in here. Baptists, Methodists. Anything else in Church of Christ, Seventh-day Adventist. Come on, how are we going to come into unity in this building? Because we got one Father. Therefore, we've got one Word. Therefore, we understand each other. We've got one cause. It's to bring glory to God, to do good. It is the language we're to speak. It's the language that's found there in your Bible. It's the language. It doesn't have to be King James Version. But it's the language you're to speak. That book in your lap contains your vision. It contains your goal. It contains your cause. Raising your family, Mary, that contains your cause. You and Ricardo, y'all are raised different. Coloradians. I'm sure Ricky thought the kids should be raised one way. You thought the kids should be raised another way. How are we going to find unity in this? What's God want my kids to be and how do I get them to be there? What does God want my children to be and how is God going to, how is he going to help me get them there? And when you approach things that way, you wanting you to get your kids up early in the morning, your mate wanting them to get to sleep in as long as they want to. I'll never forget Tim Brooks using that example. He thought his girls should get up at six o'clock in the morning, be out on that farm working. Terry thought they should get to lay around until about noon. What's right? I don't know. What's your kid supposed to be? What's your kid supposed to do? By God. 
then that ought to give you your answer on what's right. And when we go at it that way, we're speaking one language. We got one cause, and we just came into unity, and nothing will restrain you from accomplishing what you set your mind to accomplish. That's where it's at. That book contains the vision for your business. I don't care if it's Brian Smith selling feed and seed at his new store. I don't care if it's Rusty grading lumber. I don't care if it's Natalie teaching children. That book contains your vision, your cause. It contains the cause of your marriage. It even contains the cause of your soccer team, Coach Bob. The Tower of Babel failed because they were trying to make a name for themselves. Verse 4. Go to, let us build us a city and a tower. Oh, Bob, the pride of coaching a soccer team. Now, what are you coaching that soccer team for? You're coaching that soccer team to be an influence on those girls. Now, winning's great. And it's important, especially to testosterone. Very important. But if we keep one cause out there, he's going to have a team united and watch out what those girls with a coach that doesn't know how to play soccer does. <laughs> Chelsea had all kinds of coaches. I don't think she's up there this morning. She ain't got the new baby out yet. I am a new grandma, you know. Girl. Um, and Wade had all kinds of coaches. Chelsea had one coach that knew how to coach, not just how to play ball. You know who I'm talking about. If I could think of his name, I'd say it. I'd give him the glory, but it slipped my mind. Coached at Pottsville, took him to state two years. Oh, man. He could get those girls to play. They weren't the best players. Wasn't anybody on there a superstar. But with his leadership, and with his cause, he loved those girls. And he left Chelsea's senior year, and they brought another coach in. And that coach came against Chelsea somewhat. Thought he had her pegged. Thought he knew who she was. And, and really knocked the wind out of her. And that former coach came to him, and he said, you don't know this girl. And that coach, with his leadership, built a a team that went to state two years in a row, and the next year a coach that didn't build that leadership couldn't take them anywhere. Same girls. Same girls. We've got to be able to communicate a cause. I don't care if it's with your kids. Why are we, what are we doing in this family? What's the purpose of your family? What's the cause of your family? If you're not communicating a cause, and a goal, and a vision, they're just going to go any which way. What's the, what's the cause of your marriage? What's the vision of your marriage? What's the vision of your ball team? The Tower of Babel failed because they were making a name for themselves. They said, let us go build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name. Let us make us a name. Hmm. But we have a common word. And we have a common vision for our business. And it's to God be the glory. It's to help those that are oppressed. It's to supply needs. I don't care if you're selling calculators. It's to supply the right calculator to the right person to meet their need. If you're selling cars, Aaron, it's to meet the need of the people. And when that's your cause, you will not fail. We have a common word and a common goal in our marriage. And it's to bring God glory. It's to be sanctified, to be set apart, to be a light, to be different. We have a united heart in our church. And it is to bring Him glory. It's to meet the needs of the people for the Father. That's what we're here for. Our language is common. Our speech is one. Our vision, it's shared. We've got to work on that. Our work is united. Because He is my common ground with you. And when we start looking at anything else as our common ground, look, you're not always going to like me. And I'm not always going to like you. If that's in marriage, if that's in business, if that's in church, when we lose sight of the common ground, we're losing our strength. 
We've got to keep our common ground, our common ground, and that is Him and to His glory. His Word is our language. His Word is my language. When I'm talking to you, I need to make His Word my language. Do not say anything that is not edifying to the hearer. That's what the Scripture says. Now, it might be correction, and it might seem hard, Moni, but it's still edification. It's still building up. You're building up the person that you're talking to. So his word is my language. When you're talking to your mate, you can't just say what you want to. You've got to speak his word. You've got to speak God's word when you're speaking to your mate. And I'm not saying you quote them a scripture. That doesn't always go over real well. But you take his principle from his word and you let it come out in your words. You speak the truth in love. So many people want to just use that part of the scripture, speak the truth. Oh, the word says to speak the truth. Yeah, it says to speak the truth in love. There's times that we have to correct each other. But if you speak the truth in love, you're staying with the cause. You're staying with the right language. Talk about your business. Don't talk about it, about how it looks. What's the word say about your business? What's your business for? If you're keeping your cause straight, your lingo will stay straight. Please get that. We don't build our own towers. We let his word build our desires in us. For our marriage, for our businesses, for our soccer teams. We let his word build our desires in us. We all know the scripture, Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. If you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires. Well, I just don't desire my mate anymore. Well, then you're not delighting in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will put the desires in you. I just hate going to work. I don't like going to work. What's the job you have? If you want change, believe God for change. But right now you delight yourself in the Lord and you go to work like you're delighting in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. And that desire may be to change occupations. But if so, he'll direct you that way. Do it, making sure that you are delighting yourself in the Lord. That's the key to that scripture. Delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Can you imagine the possibilities when the common word, the common vision, the common work starts with him? When what we have in common is him, I just don't have anything in common with my maid anymore. Yeah, you do. God. God. That's what you have in common with your mate. God. I don't have anything in common with my business. Yes, you do. God. And that is the greatest place in the world to start. That's how Jesus did things. His language was common with God's. Listen to this powerful verse in John 12. This is Jesus speaking. He said, I don't speak of my own accord. What if we could say that about ourselves in our marriage, in our business? I don't, I don't speak On my own accord. But the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it. Man, would that change things in my marriage? Because I say things very plainly. And I can give you every excuse in the world. Rusty's very kind. Unless you get his fishing spot. He's very kind. He's very kind towards me. I tend to be very blunt. I need this scripture in my marriage. I don't speak to my own accord. I don't care what my personality type is. I can't afford in my marriage to speak in my own accord. But the Father, He has told me what to speak. In fact, it says He has commanded me what to speak and how to to speak it. That's how you're supposed to do business, folks. In your business, that's how you're supposed to do business. Not to speak of your own accord. But the Father, through His Word, has commanded you what to say and how to say it. Then look at this, verse 50. 
This is Jesus. He said, I know that his command leads to eternal life. Why do I not speak of my own accord? Why do I choose to speak what he's commanded me to speak and how to speak it? Why am I trying to choose that? I'm, this is a work in progress. Why? Because I know his command leads to life. Life in those girls. Life in your marriage. Life to your business. If we do it God's way, it'll have God's life in it. Jesus said, I, speak, I don't speak of my own accord. I, do what he, I say what he commanded me to say, and I say it how he said to say it, because I know if I do it the way he commanded, it will end in life. Man, what a relationship scripture. I never saw it that way. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me. Me to say. Put that on your refrigerator. He didn't speak his own language. He didn't say what he felt like saying. He said what the Father said to say and how he said to say it. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that indulge in it shall eat the fruit thereof. Proverbs eighteen twenty one. Because he knew what caused life in the situation, and he knew what caused death in the situation, and he told us to choose life. His cause was common with God's life. That's why he came. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So everything he said was in line with that cause. To bring people back to the Father, that was his cause. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. That was his cause. So he determined his words by his cause. Determine your words in your marriage, in your soccer team, on your job, by your cause. If we let the cause determine our words, we're going to end up a whole lot better off. His works were in common with God's. John chapter 5, verse 19, Jesus is speaking. He said, I tell you the truth. The son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son does also. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all he does. Yes, to your amazement, he will show him even greater things than these. The Father will show you what to do. You're just going to do what the Father would do. In your marriage, you're, just, you're only going to do the things that your Father would do. And then stand back and be amazed. In your home, stand back, be amazed. In your business, do what God would do. Stand back, be amazed. John 14, Jesus is speaking, verse 10. Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing... Whose work? It's the Father living in me, Betty, who is doing His work. His work in my marriage, his work in my business, his work on the soccer team, his work in the family. Man, that changes everything for me. I needed this message. The power of unity alone is phenomenal. We saw it in the Tower of Babel. Those were just humans in unity on their word, on their cause. And it was so phenomenal. That only God alone could stop it. And here we're talking about putting God's power behind that marriage, Dylan. Whew. Man, the things that are ahead. If you want God's power behind it, you have to put his word on it. If you want his power behind it, you've got to put his word on it. You can't be speaking your own words and have God's power behind it. That's not how it works. I don't want just my power behind my marriage. I don't want just my power behind my family. I don't want just my power behind this church. I want God's power behind it. Therefore, I've got to have God's word on it and have God's word in it. If you want your marriage to be the impossible, because pretty much it's impossible, I'm talking about having the good, the God kind of marriage. What he designed it to be. It's pretty much impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And if you want that 
impossible marriage. The word has to become your common language. God has to become your cause. And his ways have to be your work. His ways have to be your work. You've got to work his ways. Quit trying to do it your own way. It's not working. Do it his way and it'll work. If you want your business to be that impossible, making it in today's environment. Small businesses fail all the time. And in our area, that's what we've got. Small businesses. But we can do the impossible. We can if we put God's word on it. Let the word be your common language. I, I remember the story uh, of dad at the car dealership. I don't know. We've got a lot of new people around here. Dad owned a car dealership when I was growing up in the big city of England, Arkansas. I don't know the population. Small. 3,000? Yeah. We counted there. <laughs> You're talking about your vote counting. Your vote counted. Here in the small town of England... Selling Pontiacs, Buicks, GMCs, big cars back then, the 70s. Big, monstrous looking things. A lot of gas. Well, guess what happened? The gas shortage. So-called gas shortage. And here he is selling these huge cars. And I remember him telling the story about telling his employees, do not bring a newspaper in this dealership. We're not reading about it. We're not seeing it. We're not talking about it. We're here to sell cars. We have a cause. We're going, we're going to meet the people's needs. We're going to take care of the customer. And don't you bring that stuff in here. That's how you do business. That's how you do good business. And I think they were the number one dealership in the tri-state area, if I remember right. Four states. The Memphis, the Memphis zone. England, Arkansas. This is how you do business in an impossible environment. You make the word your common language. You let the word cast your vision. Why are we doing this? You let his ways direct your work. His, his word determines how you work your business. And remember from our story, the Tabula of Babel, what makes people walk away. From the dream, from the vision, and from the work. From the team, from the marriage, from the church. It's when we fail to have common language. It's when we fail to communicate the cause, the goal, and the vision. It's when we fail to understand and to hear intelligently. Remembering that those responsibilities are on both parties. And not just one. Success has the both responsibilities to speak clearly and to hear clearly. Psalm 119, 169 says, let, me, let my cry come near to you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. A lot of times I, I want to understand from where I am. I need to understand from the word. Give me understanding according to the word. You know the scripture says that a man's supposed to dwell with a woman according to knowledge. A man is supposed to dwell with a woman according to knowledge. What knowledge? Well, you've been raised? The media? No. God's knowledge. God's knowledge. You dwell with each other according to knowledge. Let that understanding come from the word. Man, there's so much here and I'm out of time. Matthew 12, you can look at it later. We talked about it. Wes said it today. A house divided against itself will not stand. A kingdom divided against itself will fall. And our strongest common ground, the strongest common ground you can have in any situation in your life, the only common ground that will stand the test of time in any circumstances is the word of God. That's it. That's our common ground. In fact, you cannot fail if the word of God is your common ground. You cannot fail if the word of God is your common ground. So what are you trying to build? And what are you trying to build it on? What are you trying to build the success of the electrical business on, Todd? You? What are you trying to... 
to build this, your marriage on. Love, what the world calls love, physical attraction, success, it's not very good common ground. You know, in Matthew, it's in Matthew 12. I'm sorry, I gave you the wrong one. Matthew chapter 7. It talks about the wise man building his house upon the rock. Building his life upon the word of God. Because if you build it on anything else, that thing is changing. And you may find that person physically attractive. There may come a day that you don't. And it may have nothing to do with phys physical things. It may have to do with attitudes and ugliness in the heart. Things change. Our common ground has to be the Word of God. And if it's the Word of God, it cannot fail. Amen? All from the Tower of Babel. I love the Word. I love the Word. I'll never look at it the same. Y'all can stand. This has been Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. If you would like more teaching, you can visit our website at www.rccenter.org or download our app to your device. The Russellville Christian Center is located at 305 Lakefront Drive. If you would like to purchase a copy of this program or if you would like more information, please call 479-968-7965.